Hello, this is James Diamond with Glock CNC, and I wanted to make an updated video on how to attach your new motor to either our heavy duty headstock or a casing that's actually a Sureline casing, and also its operation. Okay, so it's actually quite simple. Now, when you get this shipped, this piece, this bracket right here, will actually be reversed. It'll be flip flopped over here and it'll kind of look like this over it. And the reason we do that is we just don't want this piece sticking out and shipping, getting bent somehow, or you know, poking through or anything just weird and shipping, if that makes sense. So, this is the orientation that you want to do. You want to take these two pieces apart and orient them so that it looks just like this okay now these screw holes right here the two smaller ones right here those accommodate the sureline they go right in the, those two holes if you have a casing that is a sureline headstock casing now if you have one of our heavy duty casings you have a whole lot more rigidity to it and strengthening you could say because it uses four screws Right here. These are quarter 1020, and these are the stock Sherline. I think those are, mm, I think they might be 1032s, but these are our quarter 20s. So that is that. Now, once you have this orientation, like so, all right, then the slide right here, those three, those line right up to here, and you'll just use your hex heads to put those on there. Now this probably will come already assembled to this, so you'll already really figure that out, right? So it ultimately it's going to look kind of like this, okay? See if I can get this straightened up. It'll look like that, right? And of course, you know, this nut can go into that hole when you, you need to move the motor, you know, forward to, you know, line up your, your belts and so on, okay? Hopefully it all makes sense. now. The plugs in the back, they'll come sometimes with this rubber or plastic piece right here pulled back. And the reason is it's just easier to push in if you pull this back to be able to push this into the controller. If this comes all if this is all the way forward when you get it, then you might want to pull this thing back, this guard back a little bit. It'll just make it easier when plugging this in. It's pretty self-explanatory what plugs go in where. Now I'm not showing you a controller because there's been a, a couple different iterations of controllers, and I don't want to confuse anybody with with the different ones and how they look. However, the use of them is going to all be the same, okay? The knob, the potentiometer that rotates back and forth to control the speed, keep in mind that when you get those, they're actually quite sensitive. And we've had a couple different iterations of those. The latest one we have is by far the most accurate, but it does have kind of a short distance between the slowest speed and then ramping all the way up to maximum speed of the motor. Take some time get used to how it works and how to attenuate that speed okay now also the thing you'll also want to note is on the controls there are some buttons okay in general you only use those buttons if you're going to reverse the motor's direction outside of that i wouldn't recommend fiddling with any of the other settings because you might put yourself into a setting that makes the motor operate kind of strangely and not good for your purposes you could say so just use that to you know get the reverse and even if you really need to use it outside of that again don't fiddle with it the operation of this motor is very very simple it's just the knob back and forth now something that you'll want to note too is that if there's an error that comes up on the motor and the control oftentimes all you have to do is turn the knob all the way back down to the zero rpm and that'll reset it okay that it will solve 99.99 percent of everything now, the motor, if you have the CNC option, you have to bring the motor down to zero RPMs, and that's where it has to reset from there. You can't start and stop these motors at a set RPM. So if you had this thing, let's say, turning at 3,000 RPM, and let's say you turned off the power, when you turn the power back on, it's going to give you an error. Okay, It will not just automatically turn this thing back on to 3,000 RPM. All right, we do have new controllers in the future that are coming that will do that, but these models, as you see them, will not do that. Um, just by the way, if you happen to be seeing this, this is actually a uh, ISO 30 uh, tool changing headstock prototype that we have that will be launched. We believe we're going to put this on Kickstarter, and that should be coming real soon. 
So you can use uh, you know tool holders that look a lot more like this, a 30 style uh, tool holder. So that is coming in the future. Uh, you can look forward to that. All right, hopefully that settles everything as far as what you need to know to get this baby all set up and running. Start making some chips and enjoy. Okay, once again, this is James Diamond with Glock CNC. Make sure to check out our website periodically, sign up for our YouTube page, and as well as newsletters, make sure you get updated on all the cool stuff we have coming out.